This week on Maker Update, vaccine fashion, Intel kills their Kinect killer, laser cut LED neon, casting keycaps, and the eye of Agamato. Hey everyone, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another episode of Maker Update. Not just another episode, but the five year anniversary episode. Can you believe it? It was September of 2016, I was unemployed, and I thought I'd do what most makers do, which is to start putting out project videos. I didn't get too far with that, but I did have this other idea of making a weekly show rounding up other people's cool projects, and uh, I gave it a shot, and here we are five years later. And I'm not about to screw up the formula this time, so let's get started with the project of the week. Check out this PCB badge by Paul Klinger. The front shows a schematic of the mRNA vaccine nanoparticle. At the center, a series of LEDs blink out the RNA sequence of the Moderna vaccine, but a long press of the button on the back will switch the sequence to the Pfizer vaccine. The back is also where you'll find the coin cell battery, an AT tiny microcontroller, and a little key to the biological elements in the schematic and the LED colors. Paul has the code, PCB files, and bill of materials all posted on a GitHub link that I'll include in the description. It's a great little project and a literal badge of honor for a scientific achievement that is saving lives around the world. Now for some news, Intel has announced that they're closing their RealSense camera division. If you're unfamiliar, these RealSense cameras offer varying degrees of 3D computer vision. You can think of them as an evolution of the Microsoft Xbox Kinect camera, and they've been a useful substitute in DIY projects ever since the plug was pulled on Kinect. I think it's a real shame, especially now that AI and computer vision projects are gaining momentum. Hopefully there will be other products that swoop in to fill the gap. More projects. On Tested, Norm Chan has a great guide on how to design and laser cut custom neon LED signs. Norm's using these neon style LED strips which have been around for a few years now and are available in different colors or even in addressable NeoPixel options. What a lot of people miss is that these strips can be cut down to size just like regular LED strip so long as you trim it down at one of the breaks marked on the side. To plan out a design, Norm shows a great trick in Adobe Illustrator that can probably be replicated in other programs too. He's drawing his design into the program and then using the offset path tool to create room on either side of the line. By knowing the exact width of the LED strip, he can offset the width of his lines to create the perfect channel for the strip to fit in. From designing to cutting and wiring, there's a lot to learn from this guide and the results look great. On Adafruit, I also love seeing how the Ruiz brothers created these custom resin keycaps. Using silicone molds that you can buy direct from Adafruit, they experiment with encapsulating different things like googly eyes or electronic components. You can add glitter to the mix or mica powder or paint or tint. Helping the process along is Becky Stern's 3D printed UV lamp project used here to quickly cure the resin between pores. It's a cool idea. If you want to get a jump on a fun little Halloween project, check out this mechanical Eye of Agamato from Doctor Strange made by Bradley Campbell. This is a wearable project that combines a 3D printed animatronic eye with a servo, an RGB LED, and an Arduino Nano. What I like most about this design is how he was able to gear the eye using the servo positioned on its side. This allows it to lay relatively flat while still providing a convincing animatronic effect. Now for some tools and tips. On Cool Tools, I've got a new video on using stainless steel zip ties. They're honestly kind of a hassle compared to a typical plastic zip tie, but if you need something that will hold up in the outdoors or extreme temperatures, they're useful to have around. On Tested, Adam Savage offers a candid look at what he admits are rudimentary techniques for working with electronics in cosplay projects. Let's be honest, a lot of us have our own specialties and then a ton of areas where we have just enough knowledge to hack something together. I think for real beginners who are just learning, it can be inspiring to see someone of Adam's stature show off his own shortcuts and good enough solutions for wiring things up. From pre-wired LEDs to using wire nuts for temporary connections, this 43 minute video is a lighthearted introduction to the kind of practical electronics that beginners and non-engineers will find inspiring. 
And over on Adafruit, Jeff Epler explains how to give your CircuitPython projects the ability to scan QR codes. This is a trick that you can only use on CircuitPython 7 or later, and one of the coolest things about it is that you can use it with IoT projects. So when you wave a QR code past the camera, it can communicate a specific online input on something like Adafruit I.O. and then trigger any number of connected events. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, Lady Ada has a video on how to use DigiKey Search to find the perfect DC to DC regulator. Maybe you have an IoT device that's drawing 3.3 volts from a battery but needs to output 5 volts and do it as efficiently as possible to preserve battery life. It's a common dilemma, but with thousands of different converters to sift through, how do you find the right one? Lady Ada will show you all the tricks for narrowing down your search. All right, and that does it for this week's show. Uh, I just want to give a huge thanks to anyone who's helped encourage me to keep this show going over the years. It's meant a lot, uh, especially to Tyler Weingarner, who, uh, whose help early on allowed me to keep this show going and hold down a day job. It wouldn't have been possible without Tyler. Uh, big thanks to Gareth Bramwin, Mark Frauenfelder, Caleb Kraft, who been, they made blog posts about this show early on that really helped corral people to it and give the attention it deserved. Uh, to anyone who's left a comment on this show or supported it on Patreon, and especially, of course, DigiKey Electronics, who came in a few years back and put their faith in this show and in me and Tyler and trusted us not to ruin their brand. So thank you all. It sounds like I'm saying goodbye, but I promise I'm just gonna keep on doing this show until they pull the plug, all right? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.